after facing a massive backlash from our Tamil brothers and sisters and from all brothers and sisters from our country, India, Bharat, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Tri M K Stalin has conveniently given out a statement saying that nobody in DMK should talk about Sanatana Dharma any further as BJP is trying to twist their comments for political gains. Now we all know the coordinated attack by the Indi Alliance for the last two years is a part of a larger conspiracy to eliminate Sanatana Dharma, the great Dharma of Hinduism from our holy land. Essentially, the group, the bloc called Indi Alliance, we all know have joined together only for their selfish gains and for their petty political reasons. That is why today, they were forced to cancel their joint rally in Madhya Pradesh because people of country had read through their design. And for some of our friends who are still wondering whether their attack on Sanatana Dharma is a part of a larger conspiracy and design, I would like to play certain things in front of you. In April 2021, senior Congress leader from Tamil Nadu, P. Chidambaram, called Sanatana Dharma toxic. Later in July 2022, the whole country went in outrage after the Trinamul Congress MP Mahua Moitra called Makali as a meat-eating and alcohol-drinking goddess. Then later when Mr. Rahul Gandhi started his Bharat Jodo Yatra from Tamil Nadu, from Kanyakumari, he had a lot of people who gave him company undesirable characters. One such character was Pastor George Ponnaya. In the video, it was seen him explaining to Mr. Rahul Gandhi that Jesus Christ is a true God unlike the Goddess Shakti. So all these things, they kept experimenting for some time because they are very clear with their political design that they are desperate to win elections 2024 because all of them were united on a single common thread, their hatred for our beloved Prime Minister, Honorable Narendra Modi ji. Later, when Mr. Rahul Gandhi ji ended his Bharat Jodo Yatra in Haryana in 2023, in his last speech, he said, Pandavas had the support of all religions. As if there were many religions in India at that point of time and everybody supported Pandavas. Just like their ill-informed political speech now. Then if you look at their alliance partners across our country, a senior Samajwadi party leader, Swami Prasad Maurya, he called after the Sanatana Dharma controversy arose, he called Hinduism as a hoax. He said Hindu as a religion is founded only to trap our Dalit brothers and tribal brothers and sisters. Then they still did not stop. The Bihar Education Minister and a senior RJD leader, Chandrasekhar ji, went one step further by calling the Ram Charitra Manas in a very bad language and in a very distasteful comment. Continuously, each leader, starting from Karnataka, within Tamil Nadu, wherever the Indi alliance is there, either as a ruling party or as an opposition, they were competing among each other to insult the great Hindu religion, trying to see who can come number one. Now, all of us tend to believe, looking at what has happened. Suddenly, the DMK raking up abolition of Sanatana Dharma in Tamil Nadu, trying to experiment whether it will work within six days, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu trying to pull back by calling for a truce and asking the DMK cadres not to talk about Sanatana Dharma. All of us wonder whether the conspiracy was hatched in the last Indi Alliance meeting in Mumbai where all the leaders have taken a very coordinated stand. They felt this is the way forward to win elections. Now we all have to understand our country, Bharat, is going through a greatest transition that we are seeing in the last many, many years. This transition is going to propel our country to great height, not only economically, not only spiritually, not only culturally, but reviving our great glory of Sanatana Dharma back. Sanatana Dharma by its very nature we all know is all encompassing. It takes everybody's together. It doesn't discriminate between persons. But all the leaders from the Indi Alliance are hell-bent 
on discrimination, hell bent on sowing the seeds of hatred, hell bent on making sure they can create enough fault lines in our country in which healing doesn't take place in the next many decades, in which all of these fault lines can be cultivated for political gains. It's time all of us see through their evil design and reject the Indi Alliance as a block. And for many leaders in the Indi Alliance, I don't know, they take inspiration from Tamil Nadu, the leaders from DMK and some other leaders within our state for attacking Sanatana Dharma. So the voice from Tamil Nadu is the loudest among all the leaders across India within the Indi Alliance. Now we keep consistently talking about how the Dravidian model of governance and basically the DMK as a party has only portrayed caste division, has only sowed caste hatred in Tamil Nadu. Now in the last survey done by the Tamil Nadu Untouchability Eradication Forum, where they interviewed 386 panchayat leaders from the Dalit community, 22 leaders out of the sampled 386, they said, that they are not allowed to host flag within their panjayat limit areas, be it an independence day or any other important function. And this is the state. And they have detailed 17 forms of discrimination where each of these panjayat leaders they face right up to not allowing to have a name board there. When they conduct a Gram Sabha meeting, the non-Dalits not participating. So and so and so, 17 more reasons were listed. That is why this year the Tamil Nadu government was forced to send a chief secretary to a village to host a flag where a panchayat leader from the SC community wasn't allowed to host a flag. That is the sad state of affairs. In the last report tabled in the parliament by the Ministry of Home Affairs in 2022, talking about the caste prone areas, districts in Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu out of 38, 37 districts are labeled as caste prone. More than 385 villages are labeled as caste-prone sensitive villages. That is why we see every single day in Tamil Nadu, in one part or the other, we see a caste-based grueling murder. In a place in Pudukote, almost nine months back, a human feces was mixed with the drinking water in the water tank. The Tamil Nadu government is yet to arrest the accused. And they talk about social justice and other things. In Tamil Nadu, we all know, especially after the DMK has come to power, or the DMK has been founded as a party right from 1949, they were experimenting this and sometimes they have succeeded also. They were able to create enough fault lines in our society. And they were able to reap those fault lines for political gains. Now, DMK is hell-bent through the Indi Alliance to export this model of hatred across India. That is why after Mumbai, we are seeing a coordinated attack where one party leader in the Indi Alliance is competing with the other in talking very stupid things about without even understanding about or without even acknowledging what Sanadana Dharma has done for the progress of our civilization. Now, the event getting cancelled in Madhya Pradesh clearly shows that the people of Bharat are united. They have seen through the evil design, they are questioning and that is why recently, when the Indi Alliance, the forum that is supposed to take part in the media debates, when they blacklisted more than 15 journalists, and very clearly we could see their evil design. They don't want to face uncomfortable questions in the media, when especially the media anchors question Sanadana Dharma. If the Indi Alliance is trying to label one anchor, trying to pigeonhole that anchor into a box called Sanadana Dharma, they are sadly mistaken. Those anchors have raised the voice of common man for a pretty long time. And they are not ready to face the uncomfortable questions raised by those anchors. And simply they have labelled all those anchors as promoting Sanatana Dharma, whereby they will not take part in their debate. So consistently, very clearly, event after event we see the evil design, they are trying to build a larger narrative that Sanatana Dharma is harmful to our country. So this is the time we should remain very guarded. Keep these evil forces at bay. Not even give an inch for these evil forces to come back and de-seat our country 
and take our country backwards, which our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji is trying his best with all his might and power to take India back to its glory. Now I want to ask a simple question to my friends from India Alliance, especially to my DMK friends who talk about the illness of Sanatana Dharma and the Dravidian movement and other things. They have tried to abolish Sanatana Dharma, this and that. We all know Raja Ram Mohan Rai ji. In 1829, petitions after petitions he brought in, whereby he was very vociferous against the practice of Sati and the Sati got abolished. Conveniently, the later Lutins, Delhi historians and the Tamil Nadu, the Dravidian historians, they have forgotten Raja Ramoenji's contribution and they talk only about a British viceroy who was there who abolished Sati. Likewise, if we talk about the Child Marriage Act, who played a major role to increase the age of a woman to get married? We all know it is P.M. Malabari ji from Gujarat. 1880, he played a major role. 1891, when the first draft law came, it had his stamp of signature to increase the age of women getting married. When widows were ill-treated unfairly, not allowed to get married, who gave a voice to them? It is Pandit Iswar Chandra Vidya Sagar ji in 1856. He was very instrumental in getting that act for the Middo Remarriage Act, who is now trying to make sure the marriageable age of women can go on up to 21. It is our BJP government and our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. Are, are these people not Sanatanis? Are these people don't practice Sanatana Dharma? Even in Tamil Nadu, where the very first temple entry movement for many people, for those people for whom temple entry was denied, who led that movement? It is Vaidhinada Rayarji, it is Rajaji Avargal, it is Pasumbon Mutramlinga Devar Avargal. They, they were the people who led the temple entry movement in the Madurai Meenakshi Amman Kovil. Conveniently, after 1967, when DMK came to power, all the history books were rewritten and all their names were not there. It was shown as if only certain people belonging to the Dravidian movement were instrumental in taking people into the temples. Hitherto, they were not allowed to enter till then. Now, this is a large part of evil design. History books were rewritten for a long time and even in Tamil Nadu for a pretty, pretty long time, the historians with the Dravidian character have completely messed up. They have completely rewritten what has happened, especially between 1900 and 1940. Now, this is something that BJP government, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji is trying to undo all the damages the Lutins historians have done for India. It will take some time. The work is on. We are also waiting and watching that the old history, the original history will be rewritten back and at least our children will be able to read that. So, I would like to make an appeal to my friends from DMK that since you have learned a very hard lesson now, touching Sanadana Dharma will backfire on you very badly. I request you, advise your India Alliance partners also, that if you have this evil design to take Sanadana Dharma as a pole plank, you will see the greatest defeat that any alliance or any single party has faced in democracy that your alliance, India Alliance, will 100% face in 2024.